Rub up your engines! We all know the wheels are starting to fall off the electric battery car bandwagon that says, oh, we're all going to make electric cars. Well, guess what? They've fallen off of the electric car bandwagon. Well, now there's a new bandwagon called hybrid, and they're all jumping on the hybrid bandwagon. Now, Consumer Reports just picked the top 10 picks for 2024, and they were of course, mainly hybrid. Consumer Reports likes jumping on bandwagons, and bandwagon is now hybrid. Well, battery electric, oh, that bandwagon, the wheels kind of fell off, so let's try the new hybrid bandwagon. They pick cars like the Toyota Prius, Prius Prime, Toyota Camry Hybrid, Ford Maverick Hybrid, Toyota Highlander Hybrid, BMW X5, that's a mistake, those things are just endless money pits, but that's where you go, Toyota RAV4 Prime. Out of the top 10, a bunch of them are hybrid cars that they pick as cars of the year, right? They just go from one bandwagon to another. Now, hybrids can get much better gas mileage. That's true. One, you pay more for the vehicle, and two, if you keep them for years, like I do, you pay tons more fixing them because they are so much more complex. They got expensive batteries, especially the plug in ones, and general repair on them is super expensive because you got a gasoline motor, you got an electric motor, and they've got computers that decide when to run this, when to run that, and when they break, good luck finding someone who even knows how to fix the stupid things. They are complex. A lot of people have older used cars, and they're going to find out, well, maybe a hybrid wasn't such a smart move. Now, buying a new one, if it's a Toyota, and it's going to last quite some time, that could be a good decision if you do a lot of stop and go city driving. Better gas mods. Now, on the highway, they're not any different than a regular car because they just run on a regular motor most of the time. So, on a highway, you don't get much advantage. So, if you do more highway driving, a hybrid's kind of stupid. But for stop and go city driving, you will get a lot better gas mods. Just realize it's not going to be like a regular Toyota or a Honda where you got trouble free. 10, 15, 20 years, very little repair expense, hundreds of thousands of miles. The hybrids, you get into a different ball game as they age. Here's a Tesla story from Alaska. You got to hear it to believe it. Jeff Fonseca says, towed a dead Tesla tonight. I had to take it to a charging station since it was dead. I'm a tow truck driver. We plugged in the short four foot cord. It wouldn't charge. I had to get close enough with a tow truck to get in there backwards. You have to use a jump box on two small wires in the bumper to open the hood to jump it to the 12 volt battery to get the big battery to start charging. But the electric actuators were not working, so the hood wouldn't open. So I had to leave it until a tech from Anchorage shows up to get the hood open to jump the 12 volt battery to get the big battery to start charging. My God, who's making this garbage? <laughs> That's a tow truck driver in Alaska, right? And that's the truth. People don't understand those Teslas. They have regular 12 volt battery, a little bitty one. And when it goes bad, you can't do anything. So that was dead in the guy's car. And even though the tow truck driver towed it to the charger, they couldn't charge it because the 12 volt battery was dead and they couldn't get in. So they had to get a technician come all the way from Tesla to open up the stupid hood. You know, you'd think they could have a little prong. Even James May said that because he owned one. California was dead when he got it. He says, why don't you just have a little plug there where we can plug it in so we can charge the 12 volt battery and then we can get everything going. But no, it's all sealed, right? So you got to take half the car apart to get to it when it goes back. The stupidity of designing these things. And of course, this is in Alaska huh? and it is winter time. So all this was done in a freezing cold. I imagine what a cluster mess that was. So if you live in Alaska, maybe think twice about buying a Tesla. Breaking news, Jeep is killing the Wagoneer sub-brand. All right, if you didn't know, he's come, especially Stellantis that owns it. They're a bunch of idiots. They're European, so, you know, what do you expect, right? They made the Wagoneer its own sub-brand. Ooh, whatever the heck that means, right? Well, they say now they're coming back into the fold, and they'll be just parts of Jeep. They won't be their own sub-brand. I had a guy buy a Jeep. Grand Wagoneer in Rhode Island. He paid $114,000 for that thing. Who the heck are buying those things anyway? And of course, now they're coming out with an electric version. And here's what they say about the electric version. It's not out yet, but we expect the Jeep 2025 Wagoneer S electric vehicle to start at around $90,000 and go well over $100,000. Okay, who's really going to be buying these things? You know, they keep pushing these ultra expensive vehicles. 
vehicles. The average American doesn't want to spend 100 G for a vehicle, especially a Jeep, which are notorious for not lasting that long anymore. They're just Jeep in name. They have nothing to do with the old Jeeps rugged. You know, I mean, a lot of the Jeeps these days are made in Italy because Fiat owned them, and now it's Stellantis, which is a European company too. They're just taking that name Jeep and they're flogging it as long as they can to make a lot of money. Like Harley Davidson, okay? They flogged that name to try to sell them everything from handbags to oil to super expensive motorcycles. Then they tried electric motorcycles. Man, did that fail. To give you an example, Harley Davidson, they call them live wire, they're electric motorcycles. They sold 597 electric motorcycles in 2022. 597. They're losing a shirt on that deal. They tried to branch the company off. They sold stock, but they had to buy the stock back because the stock was collapsing. Right? Absolute mess. You'd think these idiots at Harley would have realized. Let's see. They want rumbly, loud noised motorcycles that can go long distances. So, why on earth they thought they could make electric motorcycles with a very limited range that don't make any noise? Their clientele doesn't want that. I guess even the guys who run Harley Davidson, they're so wrapped up in the name Harley Davidson, the brand Harley Davidson, that they believe their own horse manure and decided, sure, it says Harley, people will buy these electric motorcycles. Well, selling less than a thousand worldwide in the whole year tells you that's a massive failure for you, right? And the same thing with these Jeep Grand Wagoneers. It's like the last gasp of the dinosaurs before they go extinct. And whether they call it its own sub-brand or now they're bringing back it into the fold of Jeep, they got nothing to do with Jeeps anyways. They're huge things, right? They're SUVs. They're not Jeeps. Does anybody really care that they're not their own sub-brand anymore? Whoa, there's a real marketing gem that will move them back in. Genius. I, I imagine these people at Stellantis probably had meetings over this. And, oh, yes, that's a genius move. Let's do that. Let's put it back. We made its own sub-brand. Now it's not a sub-brand. Sounds like a great move. I'd love to be a fly in the wall in these meetings, you know? <laughs> Gibbs 5280 says, my fuel pump isn't working. I got a 98 Ford Mustang, 3.8 liter. I replaced all of the fuel components, pump, filter, fuel pressure, regular injectors. It ran fine for a day and now I'm not getting any power to my fuel pump for no reason. No blown fuses, relays are okay. Hell, understand that ultimately power is run through your computer. You could have a problem in a computer driver, but first check your ignition switch. Turn it on, and if you see that there's no power coming out of the ignition switch, but there's power going into the ignition switch, and when you turn it on, no power goes out to the fuel pump, you just got a bad ignition switch. Very easily be a bad ignition switch. So check that first. Because if it's not that, either your computer module is bad, or you got a bad fuel pump. To test that, just go back to the wiring in the back where the fuel pump goes into the gas tank, give it power and ground, and if it doesn't pump, you know you got a bad fuel pump. They don't make aftermarket fuel pumps that well. And if you got one made in China, wouldn't surprise me at all if the thing went bad. I see that all the time. Never, ever buy a Chinese made fuel pump for your car or you're going to regret it because it might not last when you put it in or in your case, your car ran for a day and now it's not running again. It could easily be the fuel pump too. So check it with power and ground. If it doesn't work, you got a bum fuel pump. Craig just says, should I buy this car from a distant dealer? I want to buy a 2015 Toyota Prius, 83,000 miles for 13 grand. It's through a dealership far away. Can I trust the dealership? Would it be worth it to have it shipped over after I bought it for me to find out if it's good or not? Okay, well, here's the problem. You never want to buy something from far away unless you know a mechanic in that city that you trust, your friend lives there and has a good mechanic to check it out. You don't want to buy a vehicle, ship it home, and then find out it's no good. It's too bad you own it then. And as to trust a dealer, you can't trust anybody for anything. Most of the time, it'll say on a sticker, as is, no warranty, blah, blah. You can't trust people that are selling used cars. That's just the nature of the game. Unless it's a friend that you're buying it from that you know, and they just happen to move far away, and you're going to buy their car, do not buy something from far away. They're far away. They know it's far away. They know it's not diddly squad you're going to be able to do about it. So don't buy something from far away. You can't trust them as far as you can throw them. And it will almost always say, as is, no warranty. Now, there are legal 
warranties. Many states have a warranty that the person at a used car lot is liable for pre-existing conditions. That if you get it and let's say the transmission shot, they sold it to you with a shot transmission. That's a pre-existing condition. They'd have to fix it. But a lot of times they would deny knowledge. You'd have to take them to court and sue them. Who wants to get involved in that crap when you're buying a used car? Try to find something locally. Never think about getting some from far away unless you're a mechanic yourself and you bring all your equipment. Check it out before you buy it. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.